What's even worse than the illness? Could it be the cure? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. This, this is a video that I've been wanting to do for weeks now, ever since this crisis started. I hope you'll take the time to watch it. I would appreciate it. It's not going to be um, as you know focused on precious metals, uh, although at the end, I think it does dovetail back into uh, why we stack and the importance of stacking. But I want you to hear me out. And I got a lot of the thoughts that I want to share with you from um, a variety of sources. I've been reading a lot, been going to uh, different websites and, and YouTube channels, commenting here and there, um, and really trying to gather my thoughts around what is going on right now in uh, our country, in our world. I'll, I'll uh, put a, at least one link uh, in the description below that uh, really was the uh, main uh, inspiration around this video, but uh, I'll put more links into other areas, other uh, articles that I've been reading that really have fired me up. And let me let me just say, not just Yankee, not just Mr. Yankee, but Mrs. Yankee. Today, I almost pulled my phone out and started recording Mrs. Yankee go on a rant about some of the things I'm going to discuss. And I just was like, I didn't do it. She would have had my head if I had done that, but I was just smiling and shaking my head like, wow, she is getting it, and I'm so proud of her. But let, let's start here. The, the current medical crisis that we find ourselves in right now is what I've heard referred to as a first order effect. And while we're hearing some pretty nasty numbers out there, like 100, 200,000 dead in our country, um, even if we follow best practices, even if we do all the right things with our you know, social distancing and washing your hands and all that, which is very important, this uh, first order effect is not, is not my biggest concern. I, I'm going to try not to be uh, political during this video and try not to you know, uh, make fun or mock or do anything that is disrespectful. I'll try to be very respectful, but I'm going to be passionate. There may be a Yankee rant somewhere in this video. I'm just preparing uh, you for that right now. You know, there, there is this second order effect, like people hoarding to toilet paper, you know, food. But even more than the first and second order effects are the third order effects. Really briefly, what about this medical crisis? Is it is it serious? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm not going to blow it way out of proportion. Okay, I mean, there's there's a lot of serious concerns in our world. Case in point, check this picture out. And I, I agree, it's a uh, slightly dated. The numbers have gone up uh, at the top there. But think about this. We always live with concerns. We 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 deal with uh, death and uh, sadness constantly, right? There is much to be, uh, you know, concerned about. So I want to be able to make sure people have it in proper perspective. I've seen a lot of uh, medical crises in my lifetime. You know, I won't list them all, uh, but we've seen them come and go. So yes, while less um, deadly than some other uh, medical crises that we've had in the past, it is extremely virulent. But even worse than these first order uh, effects is the second and third order effects. They dwarf, I believe, the first order effects. Think about it. Airlines shutting down. I saw this stat from somebody in our community, uh, March 30th, 2019, TSA screenings, two and a half million. March 30th, 2020, 180,000. That's a 92.8% reduction. That's shocking. And who knows, uh, by the time you see this video, maybe it'll be zero. But the second order effects are amazing. Hotel rooms are empty. Restaurants are closed. And, you know, I, I mentioned this in a prior video where I go to the restaurant that my family likes to go to. Gave them a huge tip 
uh, today just to help them out because wait staff rely on tips. All right. If, if you're a, if you're a waiter or a waitress, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd, I'd be curious to know what you're going through right now. All the service industry is, is just getting hammered. And this affects employment. Uh, it affects rent payment, mortgage payments. It affects everything. Our service economy grew really fast. And services are the first to go. You know, distortions cracked into the economy by decades of money printing. And all of it's going to be liquidated. Everything is going to be cut back, way back. People are going to cut way, way back on spending, no matter what you get in the mail from the government. See, most of your fellow American citizens are living paycheck to paycheck. Actually, a lot of them can't even live paycheck to paycheck. They're, they're unable to um, you know, uh, afford an emergency. They're one paycheck away from not being able to buy their next meal. We're lining up for food now. All around the country, the food banks are getting slammed. Look at, look at the lineup here recently. That's for food, folks. As I've uh, stated before, did a whole video on stagflation is a likely result with our economy. Very similar to um, uh, what it was like after the Great Depression in the 30s. We had to wait all the way till the 50s, approximately 25 years before the stock market was back to the way it was adjusted for inflation. And as Austrian economist, former banker and author Satyajit Das wrote in a blistering Bloomberg article this past week. It was called, If the Virus Hadn't Caused the Crash, Something Else Would Have. He says this, Shortfalls in revenue and cash flows caused by the shutdowns have simply exposed the vulnerabilities of a structurally unsound economic and financial system. Structurally unsound economic, and financial system. I don't care what you thought was going on from 2008 until now, but it wasn't a strong, vibrant economy. It was a paper-thin economy, a veneer of strength and stability. And he goes on to say these points. In the everything bubble, Asset prices were priced for perfection. He says toxic layers of debt were heavily exposed to significant revenue downturns. Weaknesses of the banking system were ignored. I've mentioned this in the past. Um, I, I've worked at a bank before. I, I understand about the tests that are, or stress tests that our banks have gone through. And they ignore scenarios that I believe we're about to go through. That's a weakness. Uh, the re repeal of Glass-Steagall, where a commercial bank and an investment bank, that wall of separation is obliterated now. Uh, another point was the growth of the shadow banking sector wasn't checked. Corporations, they were convinced that they could access cheap capital at will with impunity. And they increased refinancing risk. Remember, the stock market, all-time highs, was primarily a function of corporate stock buybacks. They're not going to be doing that anymore. In fact, I recently read that approximately 50% less. We're going to see not stock buybacks, but stock selling by corporations who need the cash. It's going to further depress our markets. And finally, households reduced savings and went into debt to consume and purchase houses. Mr. Das goes on to say, we did not build enough buffers against shocks, while many would struggle to raise $400 in an emergency. It's true. And there's much more. Now, again, I'll, I'll put that article, uh, the link in the description of this video. But, but Mr. Das concludes with this statement. It's a very, very good one. He says, the long-term damage 
will be great. The current crisis will compound persistent financial and economic weaknesses, structural damage to industry, employment, and public finances, and savings and consumption behaviors which are difficult to foresee. While the crisis will probably pass, and I agree, I think it will, in terms of our medical issue, they're going to come up with some sort of solution, some uh, you know, treatment, I'm sure. But while the crisis will probably pass, our fragile economic and financial system will take longer to recover. Again, I mentioned that it could take decades. So those are the second order effects. And I go, and I apologize if this is a long video, but I have a lot to say. Second order effects, how we respond to the medical crisis in front of us. How have we responded? Primarily with an abundance, a obnoxiously abundant fiscal and monetary stimulus. And it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. You know, even even Art Laffer, who was on uh, Fox Business, uh, and he's, he's a big proponent of our current president, just all in, right? Even he said it was wrong. What we're doing is so dangerous. In fact, it's not just dangerous. It is making it worse. Folks, we should be doing the 180 degree opposite of what we're doing. Now, hear me out. This is big. We should not be stimulating or attempting to stimulate the economy with trillions and trillions and trillions of money printing, with checks to everyone, to uh, the federal government being called upon by the likes of uh, Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban, who recently said, the uh, federal government should step in and basically for all small businesses, pay everything, their rent, their mortgage, all their uh, payrolls for months and months and months. Just own it, own it all. You know, you, you, you do realize what that is called, right? You do, right? When, when, when government owns the distribution of production, the means, of, you know, the, the, the uh, distribution, I should say, that's socialism. When it owns the means of production, that's communism. We are, uh, we are adopting socialist and communist ideals now. <laughs> this is the United States of freaking America. What is wrong with us? But that again is the second order effect and they're bad. They're really bad. But as I said, even more dangerous than the first or second order are the third order effects. In other words, what the federal government and central banks around the world have and are about to do. We are going to enter a new era, folks. We're going all in on universal basic income, UBI. It's about to explode. And, it, and it's really nothing new. It's been bantered around for many decades. Even Richard Nixon himself, a Republican, proposed what was called guaranteed annual income or GAI. So it's nothing new about this, but it's coming. People, people have already been prepped, if I can say that word, for this ridiculous concept. So why not now? Why not? We're in a crisis. It's not going to end for months. Why not have universal basic income? Just pay it all. They're going to go in on modern monetary theory, which says basically, in a nutshell, you can print infinite amount of money. It doesn't matter. You can fill the bathtub with cash. And the way you uh, watch out for inflation or, or, or answer inflation is with taxes. That's not how you raise uh, uh, income for a uh, federal government to operate. Mm -mm. No, you raise it by printing money. You need money to bail out every student loan that has ever been created. Print it. You need money to uh, take care of every single mortgage in the entire country. Print it. You need money to uh, inject into everyone's bank account. <laughs> Print it. And don't think that that's uh, beyond the realm of possibility, too. They almost passed the ability to do that in the stimulus bill. 
just print it. Print, print, print. Print it, go brr. It doesn't matter, okay? Because if inflation starts to creep in, that's okay. Just empty the tub of cash with taxes. Tax people. That'll reduce inflation. So it just turns uh, what we know, what we know deep down inside is the correct way to function. Not only you know, in, with governments, but within your own personal finances, you know it's the right way to do things, to live within your means, to avoid consumer debt, to not print like maniacs. But no, we're, we're going in. We're, this is the chance that modern monetary theory has to make inroads in our country. So we're going to print like crazy. The third order effect is going to be disastrous. And it's only going to solve our debt problem the way a, a heart attack will take your attention off your cancer. That's why, like, you know, I say with stagflation, it's coming. It's a toxic brew of unemployment, uh, depression, and runaway inflation. Most likely, the next step after that is hyperinflation. But again, People just think that that's perfectly fine under this new modern monetary theory. We'll, we'll take care of it. Yeah, I know they call it the misery index back in the 1970s. They didn't know what they were doing. We're so much brighter now. We have so much more uh, intelligence in our central banks. And talking about another third order effect. While this uh, collapse is entirely the fault of the state intervening with the economy, when inflation really does hit Main Street, not Wall Street, when uh, the supermarket, not the stock market, uh, goes up dramatically in price, uh, where do you think the blame's going to go? It's not going to go to the, the uh, federal government or, or the Fed, I believe. I think even though they deserve it, that's not where it's going to go. I think the blame is going to be put squarely on capitalism. Capitalism has failed us. It's terrible. See what it's done? Let's throw it out. Never mind that we actually haven't had free market capitalism, you know, for generations. We haven't allowed it. We've had crony capitalism. We've had, you know, stealth uh, socialism creeping in left and right. No, 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 it doesn't matter. This will be the perfect excuse to blame capitalism. Socialism will have its day full on, full bore. may not happen immediately, but it's going to happen real soon. This decade, no doubt. Absolutely no doubt in my mind. But that's where we're at. It's madness. People... This is this is where Mrs. Yankee really got off. <laughs> I wish I had recorded it. You would have you've really gotten a charge out of it. But people expect the government to fix all the problems. Do something. That's the cry. Do something. Anything. Step in. Fix it. Save us. As if you know, the, the government has a magic wand. It can fix everything, right? They don't. It but that's the way that's the way people think. What's in it for them? Give me what's coming to me. I, I had somebody else, um, I won't say who in the, in the community, really nice guy. He sent me a link uh, or, or, or posted something, I should say, saying, small business is quick. Get your stimulus. Just go and you get $10,000. And I looked at it. I was like, that's a loan, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a loan. But <laughs> it's a loan I'll never be paid, repaid, I should say. It's just a, you know, it's a gimme. It's a handout. <sighs> no. No, what's wrong with us? That's wrong. Nothing is free. Just because the, you know, just because the Brinks truck flips over and cash goes flying everywhere, you know, yeah, the, your first in, inclination is to run over and start stuffing your pockets full of it, right? But it doesn't work. It doesn't pay. You're going to get caught. This is just stealing from ourselves, this money printing. It's stealing from our children, our grandchildren. We... We have to stop thinking like this. Tell me, tell me this. If printing enough money to fill every swimming pool in America was so good, so awesome, why stop at trillions? That's, that's so last crisis. 
Let's go big. Let's make America really great again with this stuff. I mean, you know, quadrillion, right? You know, quadrillion's the new trillion. <laughs> it's like, why not, right? Because it's stupid, because it doesn't make sense, because it fails. Every time any government does this, it fails. Governments can't fix the problem. They can only make it worse. But we expect that. There's a sea change. Again, this is a third order effect. And it's hitting our youth full on. Maybe not so much the baby boomers. They know deep down this is wrong. Maybe Gen Xers are more amenable, like myself, to, to, to entertain this, this, this insanity. But the millennials think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. They do. They want a bailout. They want, they want big state, nanny state government to take care of them, cradle to grave. They're all in on this. You don't believe me? <laughs> you need to talk with more of them. They, there are obviously exceptions to the rule, but by and large... They want socialism. They want to have money printed ad infinitum. The government is simply removing responsibility from the individual. Okay, There cannot be any consequences. None. Not for, not for state governments, not for businesses, small businesses, corporations, uh, hedge fund managers, pension fund managers, uh, banks, households, students. There can't be any responsibility, no consequences. It all has to be paid for. We can't have pain. You know, but when we abdicate personal responsibility, we give up freedom. Just like the reaction to 9-11, you know, the Patriot Act. Freedoms will be lost. Can you see it? Can, can Think about this. This is the third order effects that I think right around the corner. All right. Can can you see a new national health regulatory agency? Maybe, or maybe just expand the powers of the FDA. That'd be a bad move. Can you see draconian travel restrictions and the monitoring of people's movements? We're we're already doing it, right? Yeah, you can put it in the comments. Yeah, keep we talking about. They're doing it already. No, I mean to a much larger degree. Can you see yet another agency, not unlike the TSA? validating your vaccination history before you travel. Maybe with a I don't know, new vaccination card. How about this for another third order loss of freedom? The elimination of cash. I mean, come on, right? <laughs> this stuff's filthy, right? It could be harboring all kinds of nasties on it. We got to get rid of this. <laughs> it's a transmission risk, right? All right, we know a global cashless society is coming. It, it, it's something that's probably just a few years away. But this crisis could be a perfect time to implement it in the United States. Okay, go crypto, right? <laughs> you got cryptocurrency. Government-sponsored, regulated, and controlled. Make Bitcoin illegal. Can't buy or sell without it. Could potentially be a third order effect. And that would make it so much easier for negative interest rates. So these are the things that I really think about are coming. And, and, and as I said, I please wash your hands, be careful, practice social distancing, do what we need to do to flatten the curve. The first order effect is significant, but I don't fear this medical challenge nearly as much as the other things I've spoken about. So what do we do? That, that That's probably where you're at right now. All right, Yankee. <laughs> what do we do? Hmm. Now, I've read that we should be preparing to enter what they're calling the trailing edge of a gigantic hurricane that we first entered back in 2008. You know, a lot of people say, well, Yankee, you're, you're, you're fear-mongering, the end of the world, blah, blah, blah. You've been, people have been saying that for decades. Well, not me. I have not been saying this forever. I used to invest heavily in a lot of traditional uh, investment vehicles. No, it, it, it started predominantly in 2008. Yes, there's a whole bunch of other steps that occurred earlier. But the biggest leap was 2008. 
That was when we entered in to the leading edge of the hurricane. Yeah, we've been in this this eye of uh, of, uh, of of calmness, right? We think everything's fine. Mm-mm, wrong. I posted a video many, many, many months ago saying it's different this time. Okay, I encourage you to watch that video um, back uh, when I when I put it out. I knew that we had launched into something huge. The the leading edge of that hurricane. If you've ever been in a hurricane, you know that trailing edge can be even worse as it whips around the opposite direction. So I think that's what we're in right now, the trailing edge. So again, what do we do? (laughs) Well, if you haven't prepared your financial house for a catastrophe, 2019 would be a really good time. No, I'm sorry. (laughs) No, wait, it's it's 2020. All right, it's never too late to start, okay? Okay. And I'll talk first about what you should do personally. And then I'm going to mention what I think the government should do collectively. Number one, become more self-sufficient. You know, I hate to tell you this, but behind the, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, the grocery, the meat aisle, if you will, there isn't gobs and gobs and gobs of, of food all stacked up back there. I used to work at a grocery store. It, it, it's just in time. It, it just shows up when it shows up. You know this. You've walked through the grocery store and so many aisles are starting to get empty, emptied out. So become more self-sufficient, all right? Stock up. Every time you go to the grocery store, don't go bonkers, but get a little extra. Have a pantry. Start having your own food stores. Second, get out of revolving consumer debt. Work on that. When that stimuli, uh, stimulus uh, check comes, you might not want to buy precious metals. Yeah, you heard me right. You might want to get out of some of that bad debt. All right? Some of the bad stuff, the revolving debt, the consumer debt. Third, if you can afford it, definitely get some silver and gold. <laughs> I have a lot of silver, piles of silver. I also am focusing more on gold, but get a hold of precious metals. They help you preserve your wealth. It, it, it's insurance against inflation, potentially hyperinflation. Fourth, From a speculative investment standpoint, consider a small investment in gold mining stocks. There. (laughs) I jumped into it right before the crisis started. I'm a little down. I'll I'll stick it right here where I'm at. You can see. But at some point, you know, again, if you're in your 401k and you can't do much uh, from a physical standpoint, you can't do much but dollar-denominated asset in in equities and in bonds, put it in uh, non-dollar-denominated assets, um, stocks and and gold and silver mining stocks. Not a lot that that could help you though when that when this all pops. So that's on a personal level, on a government perspective. Check this out. This was the forgotten depression of 1920, a hundred years ago this year. Think about that. None of you listening to this YouTube video were alive during this time, or if you if you were, you don't remember it. No one remembers this firsthand. But what happened was remarkable. We were in dire straits coming out of World War I. And the president at that time, President Harding, did what only I pray our current president would do. And that was he cut government dramatically. He cut government spending slashed it ruthlessly, okay? He brought it down to a reasonable amount. He did not stimulate the economy during that time. And the Fed, which was in its infancy, really, they didn't either. There was no massive money printing. And what happened? We got out of that recession or depression real quick. It turned around rapidly. Did it hurt? Yes. Had people saved? Yeah, we were in a better shape in some regards than we are now. We were more of a manufacturing uh, country. But boy, did that take guts. You don't hear much about this. You hear about the Great Depression and how uh, FDRs, New Deal, and all the public works and all the money spending and all the stimulus. And how long did that depression last? 
people, we need to do a 180 degree opposite of what we're doing right now. Is it politically expedient? Heck no. Is it, would it be really, really difficult? Yes. Would people freak out left and right? Yes. Would people hurt? Would businesses be lost? Yes. Remember, <laughs> what we're going through is the free market desperately trying to get back to sound money and good economic principles. It's pulling us back. It's trying to, to weed out the toxic investments, the malinvestments, the things that we've done that are so wrong. And every time we try to stop it, sometimes... Sometimes to kill the cancer, you have to take the medicine that is awful. Your hair falls out. You, you vomit. You struggle as the body is tapped by the chemotherapy. But why? So you can get well. So you don't die. Folks, if, if we don't do the right thing right now on the trailing edge of this hurricane, I think it's over. I really do. I'm not trying to make it sound too melodramatic. It really will be. The country we know won't be the same. We will have gone beyond the point of no return and maybe the point of no hope. This is, this is our chance, guys. And I appreciate you watching to the very end of this video. All, what, three of you, maybe? <laughs> Really, I do. I appreciate it. Appreciate the like, subscribe, blah, blah, all that. But I would appreciate far more, far more, if, if you would speak out, leave comments on other people's channels. And when you when you listen to, to ridiculous, proven, wrong, socialistic videos or Keynesian quack economic videos touting modern monetary theory and, and all the other stupid ideas that you will speak out. You'll say, no, 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 this is wrong. Please stop. Please contact your congressman. Write an email. Write the president. And yes, even pray for them all because we need it. Our country is in terrible shape and about, about to uh, reap the horrible, horrible results. So again, I, this has been a very sobering video and I appreciate all of you. I hope that through all this, somehow we will become stronger. We'll, we'll learn a lesson and we'll be better for it. I pray that that is the case. And thank you for watching. I hope your day is a-okay. <laughs>